Welcome back. How we doing? How we been? Waiver wire week 16. One of the uglier waiver wire weeks of the season. At this point, you're in the semifinals, your fantasy playoffs. So if your team needed somebody, you're probably not there. Luckily, if you're there, your team is good. You don't need guys on the waiver wire because as you can see, the top trending player for this week's pickup is Trey Sermon. A lot of that has to do with the fact that he was 0% rostered prior to this weekend. So the numbers are a little bit skewed, but we're going to get into the numbers of everybody on this list. Maybe there's someone, maybe there's uh, needle in a haystack here that could help you win your fantasy semifinals, get you to the chip, get you some hardware. Hey, let's tuck our shirts in. Don't mind if I have a good week. So as I mentioned, we have Trey Sermon. Now, Trey Sermon took over for Zach Moss, who injured his arm in this game. My problem with Trey Sermon being the number one ad this week is that um, he's not the number one ad this week. We have multiple factors going on here. He obviously split the backfield with Tyler Goodson once Zach Moss went out. And we have two more, more important factors here is that there's a very real chance that Zach Moss plays this week against Atlanta. There was a report that he's going to try to play. We also have Jonathan Taylor, who is supposedly feeling good, and he has a very real chance to return this week as well. So we might have Jonathan Taylor, might have Zach Moss. We might have both of them playing along with Tyler Goodson. So I don't love Trey Serban. I mean, in a perfect world where both of those guys are out again, which would not be a perfect world for anybody in fantasy football. I guess he would be my favorite pickup of this week, but I wouldn't blow the budget on Trey Sermon just because one of those other guys will be back at the latest next week. Moving down, we'll get to some defenses that I like to stream later on in the video. We have Ty Chandler. He is not available to anyone in serious leagues. You are in an unserious league if he is available. Josh Palmer is a little bit interesting at the wide receiver position. I think on the screen right now, you could probably see my... Three of my favorite waiver wire pickups of this week. We have Josh Palmer up here. We have Noah Brown right below him. And then we got Dontavian Wicks all the way down here rostered at 7%. Now, hear me out. Josh Palmer ended up having a good day, but that's what's going to happen when Easton Stick has to throw the ball 40 times against the Raiders team when they're down 40 points. Ended up having a big touchdown. Now, I do think Palmer is a big part of this offense. The problem is, what the hell is this offense now that Justin Herbert is gone for the year? So I would have been a lot more excited about Palmer had Herbert been playing Keenan Allen also set out in this one. He's their number one target earner. And I think he was just like, fuck it. Herb not playing. I don't feel a thousand percent. So I'm just going to sit out in this one as well. But like Palmer, I think he's someone that you can add to your team. I don't know what Keenan's status is for next week. I'm going to assume he's playing because I don't think his injury was really that serious. But if he doesn't play, I think against Buffalo, who is cruising right now, putting up points on defenses, Palmer could be in a good situation to see another six, seven targets, and he is kind of a, a pretty good downfield threat there. So I like Palmer, but I like Noah Brown a lot more. Noah Brown is also probably only available in unserious leagues, but if Noah Brown is available, he is someone I would legitimately break the bank for because I think CJ Stroud will be back this upcoming week. The numbers say that guys don't typically miss two weeks for a concussion. He should be back this week, which means Noah Brown will be the top dog because I don't think Nico Collins is going to play either with his calf. He re-injured it, and usually that is a two to four week timetable to return so Noah Brown should be the number one and we just saw Noah Brown toss up some some numbers he put some numbers on the board he sprinkled some fantasy points in your lineup with Case Keenum I think he went what eight for 81 or something like that eight for 82 not everybody's perfect I can't be perfect all the time you know I got a million numbers off the top of my head at all times I'm one yard off on Noah Brown God forbid 11 targets eight for 82 and a touchdown which was good to see because he had not been putting up numbers prior to this week. He had two games missed, and then he had two targets, five targets with zero receptions. But Noah Brown has put up some some hefty numbers in specific games this year. And if he's C.J. Stroud's number one wide receiver, which he will be if Nico Collins is out again, I like that. Even in a matchup against Cleveland, I don't really care about that, to be honest with you. Noah Brown is my guy. He's a nice little wide receiver, too, for next week. Moving down the list, Zamir White, another like good pickup. If Josh Jacobs misses, it's possible he misses. I don't know if he will. I think it's more 50-50. And if I had to guess one way or the other, I would actually lean more towards Josh Jacobs playing, which would make Zamir White useless. But if Josh Jacobs doesn't play, then yeah, Zamir White is probably the top running back pickup of the week on the waiver wire because we just saw him dominate 70% of the snaps, 17 for 69 on the ground, 
a touchdown. Even seeing four targets was kind of surprising because Amir White's not necessarily like a real pass catcher. He's not built for that. Splitting the work with Amir Abdullah, you would have thought that he was getting more work there. But Zamir White was really, really involved. You're talking about 20 touches for him in his first game. I think the team trusts him. I think he will get a big workload against Kansas City if Josh Jacobs misses. So he would be the number one guy that I would take on the waiver wire if I am looking for a running back. But yeah, let's get back to Dontavian Wicks. So Dontavian Wicks is an interesting dude. He just, he's coming off like a career high game which, listen, he was like a six-round pick in the draft this year, so career high, not necessarily high, high, you know, but seven targets, six catches, 97 yards, played 78% of the snaps. Now, here's here's where, like, a lot of moving parts come into play, but I really, really like Wicks this week if things break right because we don't know what Christian Watson's return timetable is. He's been out with this hamstring injury that he re-injured. The other thing that's going to be a really big factor whether or not we want to play Wicks this week is Jaden Reed. So Jaden Reed suffered some sort of toe injury on Sunday, and that would dictate that he might have a turf toe. If he has turf toe, he's not going to be playing this upcoming week. And if he does play, he's going to be extremely ineffective. But usually those are multi-week injuries. So I'm kind of proceeding as if Jaden Reed won't be in lineups this week, which would mean, I mean, they don't have Luke Musgrave. They don't have Jaden Reed. They probably don't have Christian Watson. You're kind of forced Dontavian Wicks to be a full-time player. So I really like Dontavian Wicks. And on that note, I don't know if Tucker Craft is on this list, but I really like Tucker Craft as well. Tucker Craft, yep, he's down here, only 14% owned. He's a dude that is stepping in and playing better than Luke Musgrave had played. So Luke Musgrave started 10 games for the Packers. Tucker Craft has started just a handful at this point. He already has more touchdowns than Luke Musgrave and more games of over 55 receiving yards, which wasn't a very high bar admittedly, but he's now done it in back-to-back games. He has now scored twice in his last four games. And as you can see, he's playing nearly 100% of the snaps in his offense. Tucker Craft is athletic. Tucker Craft is a good three down skill set tight end. And I actually think Tucker Craft is probably a better tight end of the future for the Packers. So I think Tucker Craft's a really, really good tight end pickup stream this week. Clyde, Clyde's fine, but Pacheco is definitely expected back this week. So I think I'd actually prefer Jarek McKinnon because I don't think Jarek McKinnon's role changes where Clyde's just completely evaporates into thin air when Pacheco is back on the field. Anyone else worth talking about? Well, we have Keaton Mitchell who suffered the ACL tear, which will give the backfield back to Gus Edwards and Justice Hill. The only problem with that is that we've seen Justice Hill operate without Keaton Mitchell and that was like the entire first half of the year and he was fucking useless so I'm not going down that path again Curtis Samuel probably not but he would be a very very high target of mine Trey Tucker fluky week in my opinion who else we got down here Chase Brown yeah he should be owned but by this point we're getting to the point where like he played I think 17% of the snaps this previous week 19 god damn it fucked up again I'm sorry played 19% of the snaps this week it's like we're never going to get to a point we have two weeks left we're not going to get to a point where we feel comfortable putting him into our lineup at this point I think he should be owned I think he should be owned in case he has a blow up week or if you're like really desperate at flex but couldn't be me yeah, no one else down here is really pick up a bull in any normal league. Uh, Tyler Boyd, like Jamar Chase, is probably going to miss time. So if Boyd is available in your league, you should pick him up. But I don't really see how he would be. I guess that would kind of transfer over to uh, Tanner Hudson. I think Tanner Hudson's been like sneaky, pretty good as a streaming tight end, the tight end for the Cincinnati Bengals, obviously. So if Jamar Chase misses time, obviously the targets need to be dispersed elsewhere, which I guess theoretically could be an uptick for both Chase Brown and Tanner Hudson. So that's needing to be factored into your pickups there. Now, as far as defenses go, the Broncos obviously have a really, really nice matchup against New England. They are six and a half point favorites at home this week um, against the New England Patriots, which are like the least intimidating offense in the entire history of the world, probably. So they're definitely a target for you. I really, really like Chicago. Like when I'm looking at streaming defenses, what I'm looking for are teams playing at home and teams that are favored. And then I go like as a tiebreaker. You could look at a few things as tiebreakers. You could look at like rookie quarterbacks. You could look at turnover prone quarterbacks. You could look at teams that are injured or down offensive linemen. You could look at a lot of things. But at the end of the day, Chicago Bears have just been straight up one of the best defenses. Like I like to use real life defenses as the tiebreaker for me. Like I will gladly pick up Chicago and play them over just about any defense on this list because Chicago has been an elite defense and they're playing against Arizona. I get Kyler's been cool, but he'll turn the ball over. Arizona's offense is not one that scares me whatsoever. Chicago playing at home, their favorites in this game. I, I think Chicago would probably be my favorite streaming defense of the week. I like Denver. Do not get sucked into this bullshit of I've seen Washington be like a top waiver wire pickup 
at the defensive position that is atrocious because they're a fucking terrible defense. The Jets will probably chew them up. I would rather take the Jets defense against Washington, even though they're probably not available anywhere. I mean, listen, at this point, I can go down the cut list, but we have one week of the season left, so I don't think that conversation really matters for anybody. We're not really thinking long term anymore. We are win and advanced by any means necessary. You scratch, you claw. You hack your league mate's phone to fuck with his lineup. You do anything that you need to do to get to next week. All right. So with that being said, I will see you next week on the waiver wire show. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit the button that looks like this. Hang.